Court of Appeal and Court of the 5th District of State of Florida is now in session. The Honorable Scott Makar, Judge, presiding. All persons having business before this court draw near, pay attention and you will be heard. May God save the United States of America, this Honorable Court, and the State of Florida. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Jacksonville sitting of the 5th District Court of Appeal. I think, if my calculations are correct, this could be the first all Jacksonville judge town uh, to, on the 5th District to actually hear a case here in Duval County. I think there was an all Jacksonville panel that heard cases up in Nassau County uh, recently. So uh, that's a matter of pride for us. We're really pleased to be uh, on the 5th District and also sitting here in Jacksonville. Uh, we do have some activity that to the arguments today. There is a lunch and learn at the register we have we may have late registration there. But after we get the three cases this morning, we will uh, be going to the uh, Jacksonville Bar Association appellate section lunch and learn, which is going to be in the uh, jury assembly room. So uh, hopefully some of you are going to be able to attend that. Uh, remember, uh, if you're the appellant, to let us know what type of time you want reserved uh, for rebuttal. Our marshal will be running the clock, thankfully. Uh, not me. Uh, keep close tabs on your time. Uh, if you've made your arguments and uh, you're done, then feel free to sit down. Don't feel you have to use all 20 minutes or all 12,000 words in your briefs and so forth. Uh, uh, we have some time management issues here. So, with that, um, we will go ahead and call the first case, which is 22 1404 State Farm. I'm sorry, State Farm Florida Insurance Company versus James. State Farm Florida Insurance Company. If it pleases the court, I'll make reserve five minutes for a vote. So the facts of this case are very straightforward. We're dealing with a property insurance claim for damage caused by water loss, and the policy provides what's known as tear out coverage. The tear out provision provides that State Farm will pay the cost incurred by the insured to access, tear out, and access the part of the plumbing system that is in need of repair. Is uh, the term incur defined? It is not defined in the policy, Your Honor, but it is defined by the Florida Supreme Court in the Savaio decision. And, and I read that decision. Is that a tear out case? It, it's not a tear out case, Your Honor. It's, it's actually an ordinance and law case, but it has the same phrase, the, uh, the cost you incur in, in the provision of the ordinance and law in Savaio, and that's the same phrase that's used in the tear out provision of State Farm's policy here. Well, in the, the pertinent part of that decision that talks about the definition almost seems to this judge to beg the question. Uh, it seems like the court is saying that um, it's liability but not ex, uh, actually necessarily uh, expended uh, monies. But the reason I say it begs the question, uh, I don't know that that's an exclusive Definition. I mean, show me in that text of the Supreme Court that it's exclusive. It doesn't say that it's exclusive, Your Honor. And, and I think that we can interpret it as either having actually expended the funds or becoming liable for the funds. That, that's the more inclusive definition, becoming liable for. Well, and, and I saw in Sabalo uh, twice uh, the Supreme Court referenced Black's Law. Dictionary, and I was curious, so I went and looked at incur in Black's Law Dictionary, and I see that it defines incur as to suffer or bring on oneself a liability or expense. You would agree if if that's the definition, they suffered an expense here when they suffered the damage. Well, it uses the same phrase liability, and they don't have liability yet. The, the, the way the contract is written, there's a contingency 
before the insurer is liable to APT for the cost of the tariff, State Farm has to extend coverage and issue payment. Once that payment is made, the contract, uh, the contingency is completed, and there the insurer becomes liable for the expense. Well, it, 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 again, back to the definition, um, Black's Law uh, de definition, which it, again was referenced uh, twice in Sabalo. Uh, if you substitute it in suffer in the pertinent language, we will also pay the reasonable costs you suffer to tear out. You would say that would be the same? Uh, the same uh, analysis point from State Farm's perspective? It, it, is, it, is, it is the same analysis, Your Honor, and the reason the analysis is the same is because in either circumstance, the contract at issue here has a contingency. That contingency is State Farm's payment of the funds. That's the loan contingency, is that right? That, that is the loan contingency that needs that has yet to be satisfied before the insurer will be obligated. Is it pertinent to the court's analysis and to Judge Jay's questioning mm -hmm that State Farm essentially holds the key as to whether or not the contingency is occurs or whether or not liability is then, in your argument, I would say finalized. It, it actually is very, very important, Your Honor, and, and here's why. The way the, the, the way the contract is structured, State Farm has to issue payment. Once that payment is made, the insurer is now liable for the expense. Unfortunately, that is the complete opposite of how it should work. Because under the plain language of the policy, the insured must incur the expense before the expense must be paid. So here, when State Farm has to issue the payment first, that's not how the policy is written. And we're, of course, obligated to follow the plain language of the policy. Which, okay. And back to incur, it, it, again, it seems to this judge, a reasonable reading of that term would suggest to me that they have incurred that expense by virtue of having an appraisal and having an obligation um, to pay for that contractually. And I, I hear you that there's a, another point to that, but is that not a condition subsequent as opposed to a condition preceding? I'd say, Your Honor, it's more of a contingency than a condition either which way, because unless and until that contingency occurs, there's no obligation for the payment. And that's the exact situation that was done in the uh, Reliance Mutual versus Boomer case. There, and the reason that's so similar is that the insured there had an agreement to perform pre surgeries for the physician. But even though the agreement was in place in May of 1960, the contingency, which was the surgeries, didn't take place until several months later. And what the court held is that the expense wasn't incurred until the contingency occurred. And that's exactly what we have here. We have an agreement in place for the tariff, but it does not bind the insured until payment is made. That's a contingency that has not yet occurred. And that's why the costs haven't been incurred. Where is that in the text of the policy? What you just said? In the text of the policy says, we will pay the cost you incur. Cost you incur is, is the phrase that we're relying on. But you would agree what you just verbalized is not in the text of the tariff provision. Uh, no, Your Honor. What I just verbalized is from the Boomer decision itself, the second DCS Boomer decision. But correct. Uh, but it, it, it's not in this, this policy provision titled tariff. Correct. 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 And, and the way we get there is to use cost you incur, applying this Florida Supreme Court's definition of incur to become liable for. And when we look at when liability attaches, that's what the second DCA says liability attaches once all of the contingencies have occurred. Well, and, and that was the interesting thing uh, to me about the definition, Black's Law, the de definition of incur, because there is a component of liability, but it also spoke in terms of suffering and expense. And I, I, that could be different, could it not? The, where you have, you're liable for something as opposed to incurring an expense for something. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, di I'm just trying to reconcile uh, that definition in the context of incur in this policy provision. Sure, sure Your Honor. and I think they're actually all one and the same when we put them into practice. Whether you suffer an expense, incur an expense, or become liable for an expense, it, it all essentially means that someone is obligated for an expense. In, in this situation, the, under the APT contract, the insured is not obligated to pay anything until State Farm issues the payment. 
how, how are they not obligated for the expense if they suffered the expense, meaning they suffered this damage requiring tear out repairs? Uh, how, how is that not suffering an expense? Because there are two different things. The, the damage, Your Honor, is water damage from the leaking pipe. The tear out provision, that, that's the direct physical loss, the water damage from the leaking pipe. The tear out provision goes beyond just paying for the physical damage. It pays for the cost to access that part of the plumbing system that needs to be repaired. As, as the name implies, tearing out part of the building to get to that part of the plumbing system. And, and you would agree, uh, Mr. Jones, that you can't get to the damage without tearing out uh, that part of the home uh, necessary to get to the damage. Uh, absolutely, and that's why the coverage exists. Now, the way the policy is written, that cost has to be incurred by the insurer. And so that brings us full circle back to what is the legal definition of incurred, which, as we know from the last law dictionary that Your Honor looked at and the Savio decision, to become liable for. And the only reason the insurer is not liable for it yet is because there's a contingency in the contract. Do, do you have a problem with uh, this particular judge looking at Black's Law Dictionary related to this definition? Not at all, Your Honor. As a matter of fact, that's what the Florida Supreme Court cited to in, in its opinion, and uh, all the rules of construction and uh, policy interpretation tell us we can look to common ordinary usage, including Black's Law Dictionary. If you could ask, or if you could tell me, uh, in the insurance world, for example, I have damage to my automobile. I get an estimate, a uh, company sends me a check, and they really don't care whether I get the repair fix or not. Uh, I can cash the check and do what I want with money and I can fix the car. Uh, does that happen here in this context as well, where you know, I have this breakout damage issue and I get a contract to come and this is a little repair for thirty-four thousand dollars. You send me a check for thirty-four thousand dollars to sign up a binding agreement. Uh, do I then have to spend the money? I mean, do you monitor what your insurance do with the money once it's issued, or can I just say I'm not going to do the breakout? I'm just going to let the, the problem exist and not fix it. If your honor is asking under these particular set of facts, yeah, in this case, yeah. uh, and if I understand your honor's question correctly, if State Farm were to issue the payment, then that would complete the contingency in the contract and the insured would then be obligated to APT. And if there's any dispute between the insured and APT, that would essentially be between them because State Farm is not a party to that contract and would be enforcing the contract or overseeing the contract or anything along those lines. But you don't care who the insured contracts with? It, as long as it's a reason. Yeah, it, as long as the contract imposes liability, that's the only legal requirement to trigger a cost incurred under the policy. So it could be any any entity you're correct on. But in my sort of hypothetical, if you stroke the check for thirty four thousand or whatever uh, for breakout, the insurer could just use it for something else, right? Or not. I would submit to your honor that they, they couldn't because if State Farm wrote the check under the APT contract, that would satisfy the contingency and they would be liable. Uh, hypothetically, if they use that money for something else, I suspect APT would have a cause of action against them at that point in time. But that is really kind of aside from the analysis we're looking at, because all of that assumes State Farm is issuing the payment first. But that's not what the policy says. The policy says the cost has to be incurred, which means the insured has to become liable for the cost before State Farm issues the payment. My is that there is a contract there, there is, they, the homeowner is liable under the contract. You get, they get the check and then they talk to the vendor, the person who's going to perform the service, and say, I really don't want, and they say, that's fine. Um, can they not keep the 34000 check at that point? That, Your Honor, uh, and again, I'm sorry I misunderstood your hypothetical earlier. In that situation, if the insurer became liable for the expense under the contract, then State Farm would issue the payment. If something happened after the fact where the two entities voided the contract, that may present a question as to whether or not the contract was valid to begin with. So, uh, uh, unless the circumstances are, are clear in front of us, I'm not sure that I could. I could. Yeah, well, I guess else. what I'm trying to get at is why is it so important to, to you as the insurer that this particular contract, in this case, that be so ironclad and the person can't back out? 
Uh, understood, Your Honor, and thank you for clarifying. The reason it's so important that this contract be effective is because that's what's required by the policy language. And we are stuck with the policy language and must enforce it as it's written. You're talking about it's just one sentence. We will also pay the reason the, the cost you incur, correct? That's, that you said the cost language. That's the one language you're talking about. The, the tear out provision, correct, Your Honor, and specifically that phrase, cost you incur for the tear out. And what that tells us, according to the Florida Supreme Court, is that the insured must become liable for the expense. And that means the insured has to, the liability has to attach before the payment is due. But in our situation, the payment must be made before the liability attaches. So it's actually backwards from the way that it should work. And, and that's why I can't believe, Your Honor, that that's why it matters. Because that's what the policy language says. So do I understand, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I, do I understand you to say that the, pay, the insured has not incurred liability until payment made or until the execution of a binding contract? Under the policy that we're looking at, the APT, excuse me, under the contract that we're looking at, the APT contract, there is no liability until State Farm issues payment because the contract specifically says the insured can cancel it unless State Farm makes the payment. Right, and, and that circles me back to the question I asked I think Judge Jay's questioning as to incur its definition, its meaning, its, its application in this case is, is squarely to the issue. My, I, I, building on that, I'm trying to understand, and in, in interpreting the language of the provision and things of that sort, we don't necessarily look at consequences, and I understand that we look at the language. But I'm curious, there is no other condition the insured can undertake to avoid liability in and of the insured, correct? The only means of avoiding that contract is State Farm's denial of payment. And do I understand it correctly? Correct. If State correct. Farm says that this amount is agreeable, it is for the work to be done, we are signing off, we are giving that check, liability attaches, the insured can in no way avoid it, right? Correct. Your Honor. So are you putting your insured in a difficult position legally? to incur thousands of dollars of liability without condition on the source of money to pay such things from insurance proceeds that they have secured by payment of a contract? Well, that's actually the very definition of liability. The, the insured becomes liable for those expenses regardless of what the insurance company does. But the policy provision requires State Farm to pay the cost incurred. So if State Farm, so if, if the insured incurs that liability, the expense for the tariff, and then State Farm does not pay it, then we have a situation where the insurer is arguing breach of contract and the insurer has a remedy against State Farm to pay that. that that's why the liability is so important. And, and your honors, I see that I'm getting into my rebuttal time, so if, if I've addressed your question correctly, I'll, I'll reserve the remainder of my time. Okay. Good morning, Mark Nation on behalf of uh, Mr. James. A couple things. I want to make sure we frame tear out properly. Tear out is to access the thing that caused the loss in this case. So it is an, it, it has to be done to address the cause of the loss. That kind of takes us out of Sabello. Sabello was a case where policy limits were paid. There was no breach. And then the homeowner, without doing any of the work, said, give us law and ordinance also. And after those unique facts, the Supreme Court says, no, start the work when there's no breach, and then it'll be paid at that time. And then it defines, it gives a definition of uh, incurred. It's not the definition, as, as Judge Jay said, and Blacks makes it clear, to suffer the loss. And here, it's particularly important the loss is the water damage. It is agreed that's been suffered. They didn't pay enough. Ultimately, the appraiser set the water damage number. They paid the water damage. And now we need to address the cause before they do the work on the water damage. These work hand in hand. The tear out is so important. And so it kind of takes it out of the car example, although it's a good example. They don't get to say what the insurer does with the money. They, under their loss payment provision, they were supposed to pay within 90 days of getting the proof of loss with the appraisal award. But to address maybe a concern, the policy does have a mortgagee clause and lists the mortgagee on there. 
and it says the check will be paid to the homeowner and the mortgagee. So the work's gonna get done, and you have to, you gotta have toilets in your house. And these appraisers assess the value of the tear out, the specific point, they put in the, the appraisal award to address the specific point in the uh, pipes underneath the house that caused the loss. And for them to say, well, the only way this contract, the only way it gets triggered is if we pay and we refuse to pay, how is that fair? How is that set forth in policy anywhere? And the contract is enforceable. You saw throughout the brief, they said it's voidable at any time by the property. It's not. It's not. There are enforcement mechanisms in it. There are conditions. If, if the court were to say, yeah, this is an illusory or invalid contract, and every borrower contract or uh, real estate contract for sale of real estate would be uh, invalid because they all have contingencies. They have an inspection contingency at the uh, discretion of the buyer, they can back out of it. But this one doesn't have it. It has specific conditions. The condition here is payment. It's time for them to make it. Um, I don't really have anything. Let me check my notes. What is the current status of the matter? You haven't paid. I haven't paid. Oh, I mean, and I'm glad you asked it. Because we have a, a, a related case. This exact issue was up in the second DCA, twice in the fifth, which I think we've listed out, and in the sixth DCA. And I've had this, I've, I probably have half a dozen or a dozen orders against State Farm on this issue, so it's coming up elsewhere too. And it'd be nice to be able to put it to bed to the extent that it's inclined to write an opinion. Well, not to keep you engaged in the debate for a moment, but it, it isn't your, I think one of the stronger arguments that, hey, they wrote the contract. They, they could change the verbiage of the contract to define what the current means in their mind. Absolutely. I mean, are these clauses still as they are here today? Are they still being used? They're the same. The only thing different is the number. It's either number paragraph 13 or paragraph 14 of the additional coverages. And it is an additional coverage under State Farm's policy. And it's this tariff. But I don't know that they could write it different. Uh, because it means what it means. And they've incurred it, and it is addressing the cause. They need to pay for the cause. Why would a homeowner go and, and well, start? Well, I was a friendly one in the sense that I thought you would argue that, that um, if it's clear, as they're saying, it's, you know, it's, the language is clear, this is what it means. Now you're saying it's clear, but, but it's, if it's ambiguous, yeah. if it has two or three different meanings, perhaps, in the judge's mind, right. then it goes against the insurer who wrote the it works. I, I agreed. I didn't. I didn't want. I know. I understood the, the meaning of. I in my mind, it's clear they need to address the cause now. They can't wait until later to pay for the cause of the loss, and they pay for the water damage first. But their best argument well, is it's in between. How does it? How let's say in hundred hundred different cases we have water damage from some source, where we have to use this uh, process to find out the problem. And how many of those cases? Is there an estimate made the front to, to correct the problem? Not that not the, what we're talking about today, the tariff, but can, say, in 25% of the cases, you can tell right now that this is going to be $50,000 to repair it, then we're going to have to have the tariff damages as well, the tariff costs, I should say. Or do you have to tear it out before you can actually get a valid estimate of what it's going to cost to repair it? You, usually, they video scope the lines, think of it, a, big colonoscopy camera. They go and video scope the lines and they can tell where the damage is. They go through and they're able to tell. And I, that's what happened in this, in this case. And that's why the appraiser, the State Farms appraiser, and the umpire who signed the appraisal form, said here are the specific points that are causing the loss that are underneath the house. And so they know, everybody knows that that caused the loss. Everybody knows the scope of the work to be done to address the cause of the loss. And the insured entered a contract. It's a valid and binding contract. They didn't have to, they did. And submitted the proof of loss. Their loss payment provision says they'll pay in 90 days. They, they can't get around that. And to, if incur has multiple different meanings, then it has to be interpreted in favor of the insured. That's it. I'll check my notes, but I think that's it. The insurer can't back out, and I think we made that clear in our papers. Do 
Do I need to address their supplemental authority that they filed after Judge Sauer mentioned on that recently? It's up to you, guys. Uh, in that case, it, it was a throwaway issue on race judicata. It was a case that existed at the time our brief or their brief was filed. And in that case, either party could back out at any time any, for any reason. And it was a third DCA. On, in dealing with race judicata, it says that doesn't get you out of race judicata in that circumstance, but it wasn't briefed by either party. Um, so I have, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. I'll maybe one day realize this isn't the worst DCA. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Council, you got 434. Thank you, Your Honor. And I'll just pick up on one point that Mr. Nation addressed, which is he questioned where in the policy does it say the state farm can do what it's trying to do. That is the provision that we've been talking about, where the tear out provision says the cost you incur. That's the same phrase that was used in the ordinance of law provision of the Florida Supreme Court survival decision. That means the insured has to incur the liability. Or excuse me, that means the insured has to become liable for the expense. Liability attaches once all of the contingencies have been met. And in this case, the contract has a contingency that hasn't yet been met. That means liability hasn't attached and the insured has not met the legal definition of incur. And that's why the trial court erred in the case of your orders. So unless the court has any other questions, I'll rest on the brief. Okay. 